Hello everyone and welcome to Medicated Housewife DIY where crafting and mental health come together. My name is Sarah. In today's DIY video, Wood Pumpkin DIY $1 Quick and Easy Dollar Tree Fall DIY, we are making three amazing $1 pumpkins that look like real wood using Dollar Tree foam pumpkins, a couple of balloons, and some alcohol ink. These $1 pumpkins transform into high-end fall decor that you will absolutely love. It's pretty cool, so stick around and let's go make some stuff and jump right into this. To begin with, I'm using a $1 foam pumpkin from Dollar Tree and three of these 24 inch white latex balloons I got on Amazon. I'll link them in the description box below for you. And these pumpkins that I got are from last year and were painted from a previous project. It doesn't matter because we're covering up the whole pumpkin with the balloon. We're cutting the balloons open right below the neck and you need to go far enough below the neck of the balloon to be sure the opening is wide enough to stretch over the pumpkin. We give them a little stretch before we attempt to cover the pumpkin with the balloon. Now, getting the balloon over the pumpkin takes a little finesse, and the reason you're not seeing the entire process on camera is because any way you slice it, it's just not pretty to watch. You will need to put in some effort to do this, and I think at one point, I was holding the pumpkin between my knees as I stretched the balloon over the widest part of the pumpkin. It's a process, but very doable. You just might not want anyone to see you do it. But once the widest part of the pumpkin is covered, it's just a matter of pulling and stretching the balloon in small sections to cover as much of that pumpkin as is possible. And on two of the pumpkins, the balloon covers the top and ends at the bottom of the pumpkin where no one's going to see it. And on one last pumpkin, I actually put it on over the bottom, so it ended on the top. So basically, I just turned that pumpkin over and the bottom became the top. If you saw my decorative wood balls video, you know where we're going with this, but if not, I'll drop a link to the video in the description box below. We are going to be using alcohol inks to get our wood grain effect on these pumpkins. And to do this, we need a bottle of 91% alcohol, which is a little different than the regular stuff from the drugstore, but it's easy enough to find. This and all the other supplies I use in this video will be linked for you below. We also have a bunch of cheap makeup brushes that I only use for alcohol ink. You do not want to mistakenly use these for your face after you've used them for alcohol ink. Trust me on that. And my first color is the color Teakwood. I use the Tim Holtz alcohol inks. Also, you will have a link for that below. I dip the brushes into a small cup of 91% alcohol and blot them on some dry paper towels. And that color that you see is just some old ink that's releasing from the brush from being put in the alcohol. We use alcohol inks. Um, it's a little like watercolor painting, but the 91% alcohol is like water and the ink is like the watercolor paint. You can dip your brush in alcohol to dilute your ink and move it around with your brush. The color is very easy to build up on or to lighten up just by wetting your brush with that 91% alcohol. And one of the things that's so great about alcohol inks is how easy it is to manipulate them to get your desired result. And all I'm doing here is dropping little droplets of ink onto the pumpkin and I use my large brush to brush the ink onto the pumpkin in long up and down strokes. And just the stroke marks alone start to look very wood grain like so it's, it's like the ink is doing the work for you. I want to get the whole pumpkin covered in a base coat and then I can build up on the color from there. Just so you understand, I'm still only using one color of ink. That's the teak wood color, but the more I drop the ink onto the pumpkin, the more variations of that color, both lighter and darker, that start to appear. And that gives the pumpkin lots of depth and dimension just by using one single color. I use a smaller brush to get more concentrated color into the indentations all around that pumpkin, which only add to the realistic wood look. Still only really doing up and down strokes. And if I didn't mention it before, it is worth mentioning that you always wanna wear gloves when using these inks because they are inks and they will stain your fingers. 
And just a note, the uh, balloons are what enables us to use the inks on the pumpkins. If we tried to use those inks over a plain foam or even a painted foam pumpkin, it would just be a globby melted foam mess. And alcohol ink is great on hard, non-porous surfaces. Still only using one color ink, you can use different size brushes to make little wood knot like imperfections, which help with the realistic wood effect using a brush and some ink and some 91% alcohol. You can actually push the color around into different shapes and make graduating rings within the shapes or all kinds of effects. And the beauty of this is that if you mess up or you hate what you've done, you just wet your brush with alcohol and go over the same spot to make whatever you did just disappear. It's super easy to work with and to a certain extent, it's goof proof. And that's the case here with this wood knot that I felt ended up way too large and I just didn't like the way it looked. So I do end up later on just taking some alcohol on my brush and brushing through it to get rid of it. It's, it's really that easy. At the top of the pumpkin using the same one color, I used my brush to twist the color around into a circle and I figured it could look a bit like a wood grain knot at the top of that pumpkin and worst case scenario, I could cover it up with my stem and some leaves. To replace that large knot, I did make some smaller ones just to give that pumpkin more visual interest. For our second pumpkin, I'm gonna use the color Espresso, which is a much darker and a red toned brown color. And just like our first pumpkin, we are only using this one color alone. And the first thing I wanna do is to cover the whole pumpkin with a base coat of this color. We're using a large brush and up and down strokes all around the pumpkin. I keep adding more and more layers of that same espresso color until I get a really deep warm brown color that I'm looking for. The ink creates its own variations in the tones, making it resemble a real wood. The third and final ink color that I'm using is called Latte, and it is pretty similar to the teak wood color, but this one's a little less yellow toned. I use the same technique of one color and building it up layer by layer as I did on the previous two pumpkins. Since both the teakwood and the latte pumpkins were so similar, I decided to experiment a little with one of them. And I don't have much experience with this crackled paint, but I figured, hey, why not give this a try on one of my pumpkins? I'm using Jot White Glue from Dollar Tree and I did water it down a little bit because the stuff was pretty thick. I used a large brush to coat a generous amount of glue from the bottom of the pumpkin, just about halfway up the pumpkin, and I tried to make it uneven at the top to look like it was an old faded paint job on a pumpkin. I did one coat, not too thick, not too thin, halfway up, with jagged edges all around the pumpkin and I waited for that glue to get tacky but not dry. So once the glue is tacky but not fully dry, I'm using Folk Art Home Decor chalk paint in the color white and I'm using the same kind of brush. I paint one coat of the white paint over the areas where I had painted the glue. You don't wanna use too much paint but enough to cover all of the glue fully and then I put that aside to fully dry and to do its crackling magic. Since I have three pumpkins, well, I'm going to need three stems. I grabbed my DAS, that's D-A-S, air dry clay, and broke off three pieces to use as my stems. I rolled each piece into a stem shape and pressing them down to get a flat protruding bottom base like a real pumpkin has. I also used a wood dowel to make four imprints onto four sides of each of the stems because pumpkin stems are all like uneven and have lots of indentations and ridges. Then I lightly twisted the stem from the base up so that they were a little twisted and a little bent. I finished the tip of the stems with a small indentation with sort of like an edge 
around it. I was pretty happy with the end result, how they looked, and then I allowed them to dry overnight. Once the clay has dried, I give the stems a base coat using Folk Art Home Decor chalk paint in the color Oatmeal. I also didn't mention that I had stuck a toothpick into the middle of each of the stems before the clay had dried, and that's to help the stem stay in the foam pumpkin. Once the base coat is dry, I gave the stems another coat of paint. This time I'm using Folk Art Home Decor Antique Wax. Then using a small brush, I use more antique wax to fill in and darken all of the crevices and the indentations and wrinkles along the base and the stem to give them some depth. Lastly, I use another small brush and some Folk Art Treasure Gold paint to accent the edges and some of the lines along the stem and on the base. I knew I wanted some leaves along with my stems, but I can honestly say I've never seen a pumpkin leaf in person. Every real pumpkin I've ever had already had the leaves removed, so you will have to forgive me if my pumpkin leaves are not accurate. I'm just using my imagination here, folks. I had some of these faux ivy pieces in my stash and I needed them to be smaller and slightly less pointy. So I went ahead and trimmed them all to a smaller size and to a rounder shape. I also wanted them to be a little crinkly. I know I'm being really, really extra here. So I took all the leaves and I gave them an accordion fold to try and get them a little, a little bit crinkly, just a little. I also wanted my leaves to be two-toned, so I grabbed some Deco Art acrylic paint in the color light green and a small brush and I loosely followed the printed lines of the original leaves and then I fanned some of that light green color out around the printed lines. So all of my leaves were two shades of green. Last thing to do was to attach my stems and leaves to my three pumpkins. Using the toothpick attached to each of the stems, I made a small hole through the balloon and into the top of each of my foam pumpkins. I adjusted the leaves between the pumpkin and the stems and then used a little tacky glue from Dollar Tree to secure everything in place. And these are all three of my faux wood pumpkins. I really like these pumpkins. I think these are really impressive looking for $1 foam pumpkins from Dollar Tree. I'm happy with the stems, happy with the leaves, and pretty happy with my wood grain finish on the balloons. I do have to say that the experimental crackle paint on that one pumpkin is not my favorite. I'm not sure what I was expecting, but I don't hate it. I'm thinking maybe it needs more of something. I don't know. What do you think? Let me know in the comments how you feel about any of these three wood pumpkins and what details you might have done differently. I'm really curious what you all think. I hope you enjoyed this Medicated Housewife DIY and if you did, please consider hitting the like button and subscribing. It really helps out my channel. Once again, I really appreciate you watching and a really big thank you to my subscribers. I am so glad you're here. And until next time, I'm the Medicated Housewife and crafting is my medication.